Hello, everyone. So I'm back today, and I can hear myself. So I don't know if that's right or not, but either way, I'm back today, and I'm here to talk about Restore Point, which is a movie I saw at the Toronto After Dark Film Festival. So I'm going to give my instant-ish reaction. Technically, it's been a little bit of time since I saw it, but regardless. Restore Point is set in Central Europe during 2041. A female detective investigates the case of a murdered couple where a restoration team is able to bring one of them back to life. Now, this movie is a Blade Runner-style sci-fi movie, but also a detective mystery at the same time, which I feel like makes it not only one of the better sci-fi movies, but also one of the better detective movies at the same time. The production design of this movie is really stunning, especially because, you know, obviously it's not a massive budget film. And the futuristic vibes leave a little bit of this modern and, you know, not super out of nowhere kind of future. Like, you know what I mean? Like it keeps a lot of the original buildings, kind of older buildings, and doesn't really go to that crazy future because it is only in 2041. It's not in, you know, 332 or 3, you know, whatever, right? I can't, I can't do numbers. Um, and the story itself is really well done because there's a lot of layers you have to unpeel in this movie. And it, I was amazed by how well they were able to kind of peel back a lot of those layers. And they also didn't give the audience a lot of, um, oops, wrong one, there we go. A lot of, I guess these, you know, they didn't give the audience too much information, right? They kept the audience kind of in the dark. You got a lot of, you got a lot of just, you know, you were going with the story. There's a character who doesn't have, you know, memory of, the, of kind of the incident, the inciting incident of the detective story. And the audience doesn't get any of that insight either. And so we're kind of forced to kind of try to figure it out for ourselves, which is, again, very unique. And I thought very, uh, well, very well done, frankly. Now, with sci-fi movies and with detective movies, you can always fall into cliches, right? And you can kind of get messed up. And especially endings if, when you have detective movies, right? Because you look at some of these movies where they try to unravel mystery. And then they kind of go through this entire stream of events, which all were just nice and coincidental, which all just happened to work out, even though the odds of them working out exactly as planned are like zero. But that was not the case with this film. That that's not at all what happened. They took a number of, um, of these strings and they made sure that they all kind of worked. And a, apart from like one moment, pretty much had a non, completely unrealistic way for this all to unfold, uh, including kind of how it all ends and who's brought to justice. Now this movie also took a number of philosophical and political positions especially when it comes to the idea of death and revival and the whole concept of if that's actually right and if kind of living almost forever or avoiding unnatural deaths is something which should be allowed, right? And should be considered normal or if that kind of takes away what is a human life, right? And the other big plot point was the privatization, right? Which This is kind of the more political point, but the restore point technology, which is the technology that kind of brings you back to life, is by the many different political aspects talked about privatization, right? And it talks about privatizing this, which brings up concerns from people in the movie about cost and obviously the company that institute, the company that kind of runs restore point talks about the innovation that can come from privatization, right? And that's kind of a thematic link throughout the entire film and drives a lot of the characters' motivations when it, with that exact plot of 
to be privatized or not to be privatized, right? Because this technology, as you would assume in real life, if this were to happen, would be were, was very controversial and how it would be delivered, how it would be, you know, served, whether through the public or through private. Um, also, it seems like the EU is fully functioning in 2041. So that's pretty good. Um, other than that, I mean, it, it's great. The villains are great. Uh, and villains, because there are multiple, the he- main hero, and some of the other cool ways they use this technology, not as a MacGuffin or like a get out of jail free card uh, in order to bring like a bunch of characters back. As you see in a lot of movies now, when you have technology like that or, or something like that, which can bring people back to life, they do use it in a very creative and very restrained way. Uh, while also making that a key part of the plot, which is always nice. So, yeah, this was just a great film from top to bottom. Um, Talked about it for six minutes, so that's great. If you like the movie, um, then feel free to comment down below. Give us a like, subscribe, comment. We've got some interviews coming out with people from the Toronto After Dark Film Festival. We've got other films coming out of the Toronto After Dark Film Festival that we're going to talk about. And... A whole bunch of other cool stuff so subscribe follow us on social media at comic boys underscore and thank you all for watching i'll see you next time bye